probably will be the first academy in the world who will be setting up a manufacturing line for photovoltaic panels uh, which will give complete skill based training for the students and for the staff for the third consecutive time in the gate exam our students have stood all india rank 1 pspdu we are almost touching all the nodal points where energy transition is being taken more seriously there should be many more universities taking such uh, initiatives for skill development uh, what are the kind of uh, outcomes that students look at the it industries have taken a big hit pdu is trading equally on manufacturing as well as it we have a very different philosophy in imparting energy education so my guest today is dr sundar manoran he is the director general of gandhi nagar's pandit deen dayal energy university better known as PDU. He took over as Director General in 2020 and many of you would be aware that PDU was awarded the NAC A++ rating last year. Dr. Sundar, welcome to Shiksha Dr. Thank you for having me. So Dr. Sundar, PDU started as a petroleum university in 2007 with a focus on yeah. fossil fuels and if I'm not wrong, it was India's energy only university, purely dedicated to energy and research and so on. Yeah. Uh, the world, however, is moving to alternative sources of energy. And how do you think PDU is adapting to this changing scenario? It's a good question because uh, a bigger challenge in the energy transition today how do we go for energy storage and that too for grid support we are talking about lithium batteries in a big way but that is limited because of its energy density and also because of its footprint it cannot really take care of grid support it can maximum help up to 1 megawatt so this is where we are launching the new initiatives that has come from at least 10 years of intensive research globally in the form of uh, redox flow batteries so we are in the verge of installing smart grid to demonstrate how we can harvest solar wind and the energy storage uh, then we also go one step further to show how in this new energy storage platform we can launch ev charging these are questions that is rigorously being evaluated by the industry and by the government so we are very happy as pdu we are almost touching all the nodal points where energy transition is being taken more seriously what about the adoption of all these technologies that you are developing uh, in the campus are these being adopted across the industry by the government yes one thing is we are one of the first university who have installed 1 megawatt solar farm as early as 2011 even before energy transition and renewable became national agenda so much of the learnings have come out of our campus as far as gujarat going uh, more into renewable energy and thanks to the government of gujarat having said that we are not only worried about demonstration of smart grid and trying to bring in new technologies but we are also launching manufacturing skills probably will be the first academy in the world who will be setting up a manufacturing line for photovoltaic panels uh, which will give complete skill based training for the students and for the staff we will be able to be a effective supply chain for students with the hands on experience in basically we want to cater to the skill training in silicon photovoltaics so this is our primary and i'm very happy that in other three four months it will be dedicated to the nation and uh, around 1000 students will be trained in silicon uh, photovoltaics uh, from uh, the campus of pdu so we talk about energy generation we talk about energy storage and we are also talking now about energy transmission uh, by taking it all the way up to ev charging stations in the highways byways we can set it up and uh, we are going one step more into decarbonization Uh, and net zero compliance and also bringing crucially manufacturing skills in semiconductor mission that includes silicon photovoltaics so uh, there are uh, i know that uh, pdu has been a sort of a pioneer in the energy space but if you see today there are a lot of other colleges which have launched their own programs around energy energy system renewable energy and so on how do you maintain a competitive advantage or uh, some sort of a differentiation or a usp over those uh, programs that are being offered by other colleges 
when we uh, when we talk about a very exhaustive technology initiative that PDU is taking, but still when we compare with national agenda on renewable energy or whatever COP26 declaration for net zero decarbonization, country going totally electric vehicle and talk about decarbonization. I think uh, our contribution is just a drop in the ocean because we are talking about uh, combating a 400 gigawatt energy generation through energy. So having said that, I have a feeling that we don't compete with any of the other academies. We only want to be facilitators rather than uh, competitors because the need is great and whatever we are doing is just a, a drop in the ocean. Therefore, there should be many more universities taking such uh, initiatives for skill level so that we will produce uh, camera ready uh, students, uh, especially to meet this challenge. So put in perspective, we will be very happy to take this forward, launch these initiatives uh, along with other universities who are our neighbors rather than we see themselves as our competitors. I think when we look at the uh, global challenge, uh, the competition doesn't have any edge over the real uh, skill development program that we need to do. That's a great approach, Dr. Sundar. I want to draw your attention or rather learn from you about uh, what are the kind of uh, outcomes that students look at once they are done, once they complete their program at PDU. Could you help me understand uh, the breakup of, you know, what is the percentage of students that maybe look at employment uh, post their completion of the program or maybe look at entrepreneurship or uh, research as the third option? It's a very big question and exhaustive because we cater to four schools. A school of Technology, Energy Technology, Liberal Arts and Management. And the tenor is different with respect to the admission as well as with respect to the employment. But we are also serving a very unique uh, category of students who come in, especially from Gujarat. Most of these students come from a family business background. Therefore, they're extremely delighted to acquire knowledge and immediately take it to the field. Having said that, in the liberal arts, we have over 500 students graduating and nearly 70% of them by default pursue higher education uh, and uh, at least 25% of the total group which graduates every year, they go abroad and they are doing exceptionally well. Uh, I'm very pleased to tell you for the third consecutive time in the GATE exam, our students have stood All India rank 1 and uh, also in the top 10, minimum 4 people People are qualified in the AR ranking. Uh, so that leaves a very strong footprint on the determination on the part of our stakeholders to go for core engineering jobs to industry and also to academia for research. So overall, it's uh, very gratifying to see how our students choose their career, the future. We have at least 300 to 350 students outbound every year without much of our intervention because they are all on auto mode. So that's the way we have set the platform. And third, we have four engineering companies coming for placement. And I'm very pleased to tell you this year, 20 of our students were placed in ONGC with a 24 lakh package. Average package is exceeding 8 lakhs now for undergraduate students and for management it is already crossed 12 lakhs so that should give you some idea about the tempo we sense in the placement and uh, especially in the management we have 100 percent placement 100 percent employment in the engineering it's about 90 and in the sls that is liberal arts we see 50 50 50 percent going for um, higher studies so it's a very good response and we are trying to empower more and we would like to improve our score on the placement further and our students are extremely delighted to work and orient themselves more on the core jobs. That is a welcome commitment from the students who are graduating. These are great numbers, Dr. Sundar. I'd like your insights on how the placement scenario is changing. It's a bit vulnerable because of two reasons. One, uh, we are in the post-COVID recovery process. So the IT industries have taken a big hit, although they had work from home uh, concept. But the manufacturing sector really went for a toss because almost 18 months of touch-me-not situation. Uh, so manufacturing is uh, recovering. 
PDU is trading equally on manufacturing as well as IT. So we don't have any discord. In fact, uh, we are very, very happy because our students who acquire 33% of the coursework on skill-based and experiential-based learning, there is no dearth for the brilliance in IT field. So I'm thinking recruitment is going to be very, very positive, encouraging, uh, especially in the core branches. Uh, in the coming years. I believe PDU was one of the earlier universities to launch their liberal studies school and the liberal studies program. Having an energy university, a university dedicated to technology with its own school of liberal studies, how has the presence of uh, or the evolution of liberal studies in a core engineering campus, how has that worked out for you? It was a great learning for me and a surprise when I got to know that computer science and um, ECE, ICT where the most recent uh, programs started, which in other universities would be the first one to start. And the other surprise for me when I joined PDU was uh, after starting School of Petroleum Management and School of Petroleum Technology, it was liberal arts which was started even before all branches of engineering were started as a university since 2007. But I can't believe that we started the uh, computer science only five, six years back. And EC was started just three years back after I came. So we are not in urgency to start only premium courses, but we are actually laying more emphasis into manufacturing. Therefore, that shows that uh, we have a very different philosophy in imparting energy education. So that is the very uh, rewarding and a unique feature of uh, PDU because the liberal arts is uh, surrounded by all the engineering and science departments. So there is a very non-threatening at the same time, a very participating venture. Uh, from last year, we have made 12% of our total credits compulsory for uh, engineering students to take from liberal arts and vice versa. We are also asking the liberal arts students to take 12% of the credit uh, from the engineering and science group so that they will be actually are befitting the marketplace demands and these are new formations so to say so in pdu i think uh, uh, sls has its uh, special place since you mentioned nep i'm going to uh, just change gears and uh, talk about nep and what it's trying to accomplish uh, as it gets more and more matured do you see that uh, you know design your own programs or design your own undergrad programs is really where we are headed and if that be the case what in your opinion is uh, should these de degrees of the future look like what will they look like uh, well uh, nep is visionary and um, uh, it is already two years since it's launched now. it's in the third year and uh, most of the affirmative steps are being taken in the current academic year but i think uh, such uh, leap forward initiatives are needed because with the, if we look at global competency, I think we need to talk the same language if we want to be globally competent. I think it won't throw you haywire. It is a focused appropriation of credit. Number one, if there is a disruption in your academic progress due to many reasons, uh, here comes one unique opportunity that you don't have to feel that you missed the bus, but you can always take a conscious detour and then you can come and merge again uh, in the university uh, timeline for graduation. Number two, this is supposed to help girls who go through different pathways uh, during their education and one disruption sometimes can deprive them for years to come. Therefore, the NEP gives a very unique proposition for uh, girl students in my perception. And number three, this sort of orientation will keep you ease and calm when you hit foreign soil, especially for other degrees. So it's almost sort of bringing the entire academic system neutral or flat, par with the global universities. So I think that this is a very important initiative that has come and I'm sure it's going to revolutionize the concept of university education. It will make students to go into different campuses to credit courses. I'm just going to ask you one last question. I would like you to wear the counselor hat and uh, give your advice to students on how they should make the most of their years at PDU. 
yeah i think um, the education system is right and uh, very nicely pruned uh, for the uh, future generation and i think we are living in one of the crucial moments of human history i should say when there is a knowledge explosion and the previous generation has carefully crafted a curriculum that is non threatening welcoming and trying to make sure that it's uh, giving a beyond the borders perception therefore the younger generation or the generations to come will definitely have a great time learning therefore it's a great time i i envy the present and the future generation because that's not the uh, way we learned uh, but i think we are leaving a very strong footprint for the future generation to make a very joyful experience out of university learning it was a pleasure chatting with you dr sundar thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on shiksha talkies please is video ko like share zarur kijiyega aur channel ko subscribe karna bilkul mat bhuliyega thanks for watching